Hello, uh, I've received a request for a block-by-block -block build on the CRCS reactor. Uh, so I've just finished putting one together just to uh, refresh my memory and I'm going to do another one. Uh, this build probably took me about 30 minutes to do. Um, hopefully I will do it quicker in this block-by-block. -block. And uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give myself a quick boost of power so that I can uh, run all of my equipment. So you, whoop, you can see the blocks I'm laying as I drop down here. Uh, da, 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 and then FSU. So I'm just giving myself a quick plasma generator just to uh, get some power in. And this is just going to be to uh, power my initial um, ME system here. And obviously you would probably have some kind of power already um, whenever you, you began. So we're going to need two ME systems. Uh, we don't need any disk drives. Access terminal just to take a look at stuff. And let's get some cabling run. Alright, and let's see. We're going to need dirt blocks. And this is where a reactor is going to go um, above here. But we want to go ahead and get our level emitter down. And put back in our dirt here. And we're going to want a redstone torch there because we're going to be inverting our signal. Give ourselves our emergency override. Alright, let's go ahead and drop our reactor on top. And I don't normally do block by blocks um, because I'm not very good at them. Um, things normally take me a little while and I figure stuff out as I go a lot of the time, so uh, hopefully this isn't too incredibly painful for everyone. Just using the remote sensor kit here, dropping my sensor into my remote thermal monitor. And we've got to get our signal up to this block here. Let's get our support back out and we're going to go here, here. Uh, that should be fine. Get some redstone running from it. And we want to use a redstone repeater. That way it isolates our signal so we don't get um, back feed from our lever into our remote thermal monitor. We're going to go ahead and cut this down to 100 because we never want heat in our reactor. Let's get this powered up. We need an LV transformer and an MV transformer because this takes LV. Doop, doop, doop. There we go. Hey, it didn't explode. That's a good sign. Okay, um, let's see what do we need next. Let's go and get our second system going here. It's going to run a little bit of ME cable. And we're going to need an interface. That's where we're going to drop our... Actually, let's raise that up one. Make our lives easier. There we go. Dropping in the interface right there. Okay, and we're going to use precision export buses. I'm using uh, the unhinged pack. Um, if you're using an older pack, you just use regular export buses. Um, if, if there's no differentiation between the uh, precision and fuzzy, um, if you've got precision fuzzy, you want precision. There we go. Wire all these up. And so you'll notice that these export buses are on the system that is going to connect to our nuclear reactor. And let's go ahead and get that connected. Drop a storage bus on it. Wire our ME cable down. Hello, lever. You are in my way. It's okay. And we're also going to want export buses from our second system coming into our reactor. So let's go ahead and drop these on. You gotta be careful not to cross our cables. So we've got those, and we're going to bring that out here. That's fine. Not the cleanest in the world, but it's okay. Okay, so we've got a primary system. We've connected up a storage bus and five export buses. 
and a secondary system we've got an interface we've got six export buses uh, the count isn't super important um, on our secondary system we're also going to need a couple of reactors so let's go here and here and I'm just going to do two um, you can put more on here if you want to but just for the speed of getting this assembled we're just going to do the two okay and we need storage buses on these there we go a little bit of cable alright and on the secondary system this is where we're actually going to be cooling our uh, our components down so we've got to drop all these component heat vents in here and you just want to make a grid pattern with them it's going to be somewhat time consuming but we'll get it taken care of here pretty quick doop, 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 doop. Events okay, every other good. Let's get a fresh batch here. And it doesn't really matter if you start in the top corner or not. Um, your goal is to just make sure that every block is being touched by as many component heat vents as possible. So just pack them in there. We'll check our board pattern. Doop, 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 doop. Okay, here we go. And hopefully I do everything right and don't have a big old explosion after I film this whole thing. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. So we've got all the basics set up, right? So we've got our override. We're gonna need to program you. We're gonna need to program those. Got you all set. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and load out our reactor. So we're not gonna be on because we've got our lever toggled here. So let's go ahead and program our reactor. We are going to drop. We're going to use the exact same setup that we used in the original video. So we're going to drop all these quad plutonium cells in. We're going to go here, 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 and here. What we're doing is we're making sure that we've got room for a single NAK storage cell next to each of these. Let me some more of those. All right. And so the next thing that we need to do is we need to pulse our reactor one time. So let's do that. Ready, ready. Oh, why is oh because of our silly little uh all right, let's just break this for a second. No? You don't want to turn off now? Alright, turn that off. Here we go. We're gonna pulse one time. Okay. So now we're at 672 heat, and I know the heat's been kind of tweaked um, between this version and the previous version, but um, you see we've run one tick off of these, and that is exactly what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here to these uh, export buses that are coming out of our system with our active reactor on it. We're going to program all of these with a NAK storage cell, a coolant cell that's... Or la la la. NAK coolant cell that's been hit with one pulse of reactor heat. All right. Three, four, yeah, five. All right. Let's wire our goodness back up here. here. Excuse me. That's fine. Okay. And let's fill my dirt. I don't like dirt blocks. Okay. Alright, so now every time uh, these get hit with heat, they should be pulled out of the system and that worked correctly. And they should come over here where they will begin cooling off. Perfect. And let's go ahead 
and we're going to fill in our corners, our four corners with overclocked heat vents. That's fine. Alright, we actually need to wait. Actually, no, we don't. We'll just go ahead and drop these in here. Uh, so there is a difference between an NAK cell that has never been in a reactor and one that has. So when we're programming our other set of export buses, um, we want to uh, program them with NAK cells that have been in a reactor at some point. Uh, we're not going to fill all of these up. We want to make sure we leave space uh, because if we don't, uh, then we can't pull our damage. Well, actually, we don't have any in there at the moment, so we should be able to fill this in. Uh, depending on where your cells are, just pay attention though because you, you don't want to leave yourself in a spot where uh, you can't pull damaged cells out of the reactor. Okay, so we've got our NAK cell that has been in a reactor. So this guy should fill up. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and program all of these with an NAK cell. All right. There we go. And last one. All right, NAK cells. And so when we look in here, we should see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NAK cells. Um, but our access terminal is going to give us a different number. Let's see what it thinks. It thinks we have 18. And that is described in my first video why it's doing that. Um, we don't really care, just as long as we know what the number is. We're going to signal. Uh, when levels are below 18 NAK coolant cells. Okay, uh, so at this point I think we're actually done. Um, if I did it wrong we might blow up here, but let's just go ahead and kill our emergency override. Okay. And we see they pulse, they get pulled out, and they go into the other reactors for cooling. Uh, so that's it. Um, I only did two reactors over here just as a because of time constraints. So this isn't going to run constantly. Um, you need way more reactors in your cooling bank if you're going to use coolant cells. Um, let's go ahead and just for fun uh, go ahead and start capturing our power output here. Let's go drop an HV transformer right there. Uh, because this is uh, greater than HV coming out of here. We'll just pull this off a little ways. And we'll stick an MFSU over here. Yeah, whatever. Right there, it's fine. And next time we hear a reactor pulse, we should see some power come through here. Alright, yeah, so we're generating good amounts of power. And we don't actually need these access terminals. We need this one to check our number of coolant cells. Um, we didn't ever need this one at all, really. I can go. Uh, and if you want to expand this out, you would just add um, more reactors over here. Um, you know, fill them out with component heat vents and connect them to the second network with a storage bus. So that is a block by block of how we do it. Um, and you could, of course, you know, route your power uh, being output from your generator back over here and remove whatever initial power you're using. So we need access terminals, cable, um, level emitter, export buses, storage buses, uh, an interface with some more export buses, and then storage buses into our cooling bank. And that is the block by block of the CRCS reactor using NAK coolant cells. Um, complete with the manual override and the uh, temperature monitor there. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, and uh, feel free to leave them below. Thank you.